no matter what it takes. So do you have whatever it takes to do whatever it takes? I have read what it costs to be a Christian and a true disciple. And I have read what it costs to be lost. And I've got my mind made up. I'm going to be saved. That's my attitude. That's my drive. That's my conviction. My mind is made up. My face is set. My gate is fast. My goal is heaven. The road is narrow. The way sometimes is rough. My companions sometimes are few. But my guide is reliable and my mission is clear. And as your pastor and as a Christian, as just a layman, I cannot be bought, I will not be compromised, I will not detour, I will not be lured away, I will not be deluded, and I will not be delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice because I'm too close to heaven. I can't hesitate in the presence of adversity. I can't negotiate at the table of the enemy. I can't ponder at the pool of popularity of all of my friends and religion. And I can't meander in a maze of mediocrity. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to shut up. I'm not going to let up. I'm not going to slow up. Until I'm preached up, prayed up, paid up, and stored up. I'm going to stay there until Jesus says, come up. I've got my mind made up. I'm going to be saved. I'm not going to compromise it. I'm not going to be wishy-washy. I've got my mind made up. I've counted the cost. And the most important thing in, in this life is my soul's not going to be lost. I may lose other things in this life, but one thing I'm not going to lose is my soul. So no matter how rough the road may get, no matter how often I have to kneel and pray, I've got a made-up mind, and that's my conviction, I'm going to be saved. On July the 2nd, 1937, Amelia Earhart and her flight companion, Lieutenant Commander Fred Noonan, vanished in the vicinity of Highland Island, the South Pacific. They were attempting an around-the-world flight in a twin-engine Lockheed aircraft. In her last radio contact with the United Naval vessel that they were closest to, Miss Earhart transmitted the scary message, this and I quote, position doubtful, end quote. Position doubtful, position doubtful. She undoubtedly knew her approximate position. But because she didn't know her precise position, she and her flight companion went to their death because she was not positioned where she knew where she was. One of the events preceding the day of the Lord will be what I read to you tonight. He said in the last days, don't be so soon shaken in mind or troubled in your spirit by word or by letter. He said, don't let any demand deceive you by any means. He said, for that day will not come until, first of all, there's going to be a falling away. There'll be people leaving what they believe. There'll be people moving away from what they believe. And he said, then that man of sin will be revealed the son of perdition. I believe that we're living in the greatest hour that the church has ever known. We're living in the last hour of the church aid dispensation. I don't think you have very much long to tarry down here. And if you're going to be saved, I don't think you have very much longer to get saved. And if you plan on messing around, I don't think this is a good time for you to be messing around. Because God's getting ready to come. He said in Revelation chapter 4 verse 1, he said, after this I looked, and behold, there was a door that was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither, I will show these things which must be hereafter. 
You need to know your precise position tonight. You need to know what you believe. You need to be anchored in what you believe. Because we're at the end of time. And everything that can be shaken and every little wind of doctrine that comes along will throw you to and fro if you don't know in whom you have believed. We're at the end of time. He said it was going to be earthquakes. He said it was going to be tsunamis. He said it was going to be all these things and hurricanes that come upon us. He said, but don't let all those things rattle you. That is just a sign. When you hear of 40,000 dying in an earthquake, don't sit there and yawn through it. Let it be a wake-up call that I am soon to come. Let that be a wake-up call to you. You need to know your position because you can be behind for the school bus. You can be left behind and miss your plane for your work job tomorrow. But don't miss the rapture. That's worse than the tsunami. That's worse than Katrina and Reader ever thought of being. That's worse than any earthquake that's ever hit this world. You don't want to miss the rapture of the church. And Jesus Christ challenged the churches of Revelation. It was the same church that was in seven different locations. Everybody say, the same church in seven different locations. It was a warning from the Lord that no matter what comes or goes in the church, or in the world. He said you've got to endure to the end. You have to finish the race. And you've got to finish strong. Because it's how you finish that counts. It's not the first mile that's important. But in your walk with God, it's the last mile that's important. I've seen people come in here on the first mile and they shout and they're going to win the world and turn the world upside down and don't know why we don't have more shout than we've got. Only for a year or two later, they're no longer around. Their fuse has burned out. It's not the first mile that counts. It's the last mile that really matters. It's, it's those that cross the finish line that really counts. So he gives a warning that no matter what comes or goes, you got to finish. It's, it's not how well you started, but it's how you finished that counts. He said in Revelation 2 and 26, he said, He that overcometh and keepeth my words unto the end, to him I will give power over nations. I, I'm just going to read the third verse right here of, of my text. I weren't going to read all three, but I just want to remind you of the third verse here again of my text. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except... There come a falling away first, the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Paul says, the day of the Lord, the coming of the Lord shall not come unless first of all there is a falling away. In the second and the third chapter of Revelation, the Lord gives directives to the seven churches of Asia Minor that covers the entire church age. From the day of Pentecost unto this very moment, you will see even this hour that we're to be a Philadelphian church in a Laodicean age. And the Lord warned those churches of the dangers of dropping out, of starting and not being able to finish, of stalling and not counting the cost. And the dropout rate has been incredible. I read something not long ago that's very shocking to my mind. Very shocking to my spirit. And that is in all Christianity. They listed the top 100 pastors and churches in America. Of those top 100 in churches in America a decade ago, 25 of those pastors have dropped out of the ministry. They no longer even preach. They are no longer into their calling and their relationship with God. 25 of the 100 top Preachers in America, ten years ago, are no longer preaching. This is no time to be thinking about dropping out. This is no time to be thinking about not forsaking yourself together. This is no time for you to be thinking about throwing your hands up and quitting your ministry in the church. This is no time for you to think you're too busy to work for God. This is no time for you to not have time for Jesus. This is no time! 